Hello there, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. And my name is Anna Benitez, and I'm live from Miami, Florida. And I'm Danielle Van, live from Houston, Texas tonight. We are so glad that you're here with us. If this is the first time that you have um, shown up for Story Rocket Live, please know that this is an equal playing field for all writers of all genres of any type to put your your platform up and really show producers in Hollywood, New York, around the world, all that you have to offer. So we're so glad you're here. And we have an exciting show tonight, don't we? Exactly what our people have been asking for. Yes. Um, so in the last few shows, they've been asking to give us more information on a log line. Why is it important? Uh, what does it do? How do I make a great log line? So that's kind of what we're bringing, we're bringing to you today. And yeah. I know, Danielle, that you've been working on your log line. Yes, I have been working on it and it brought up a few questions for me and um, it was one that was really glaring in the fact that as an author, what we think is a log line in the producing field is actually a tagline in author, in author bill. And so <laughs> there's a major difference there. So we're going to really address that tonight. Well, yeah, I can see how that could be confusing. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about that before we just get going. Yeah. Um, so. A tagline, we're, I'm going to speak from the producer's perspective. Yes. So a tagline is a promotional line. It's a, it's a small line. It's kind of like if you can see your book um, or script made into a movie, what would it say in a billboard, for example? Right. On the poster, so, basically. Exactly. It's yeah. not descriptive. It's, it's, right. You know, it's something that's promotional and it's just right. short. It's short and sweet. So what is a log line? A log line is very different. So a log line is basically a summary mm -hmm. of your story, but it's really broken down to the essence. So we don't want right. to see any subplots. We don't want to know too much about the characters. If they're not the main protagonist and antagonist. We don't want to know too much. We just really want to get to the nitty gritty of the story. Right. So that's mm -hmm. what a log line is about. Yeah. So, and so in the book world, when we're talking about taglines, these are generally the lines that we write that are the blurbs for the front or the back mm. cover. So, and also if you are going to query an agent, you would be using this pretty much as your lead off, just like you would in your tagline when we do ready, set, pitch. So those are the major differences. Um, they're short, they're sweet, they're little catchphrases, as you mentioned, but really it's to draw a reader or an agent in where your log line is much more expansive. So that's what we want to teach you tonight. Exactly. It is yeah. expansive, but at the same time, it is very it's short. Not. It's yeah. one or two <laughs> sentences. So it does, right. you know, and it's so funny because, you know, writers are writers. They they love right. words and they just want to put them down. And, you know, right. uh, I mean, today that's what you said to me. <laughs> You're like, Here's my line. What are you thinking? It's like five sentences long. And I'm like, uh, the first two sentences will do. <laughs> right, exactly. And that's so, so uh, hard, though, to draw your uh, your whole book down into two sentences. But it's necessary on both sides, whether you're using it for Story Rocket to get movie interest or television interest, or you're trying to go a traditional route and query an agent. You need both, but they are different. You know, and why is it important to have a log line? And so we're going to go back a little bit to the history of Hollywood mm -hmm. and log lines have been around for a long, long time. And um, where they used to be actually written scripts, you know, everything now right. is digital, but written, you know, the scripts were, were, were printed right. and they were stacked up high. Um, one of the reasons that your, you know, your book or your script got pulled out of the shelf was because of your log line, the logs line were actually printed on the spine. Right. So yeah. that was how important it was, whether your book got picked out of that massive, you know, stack of books mm -hmm. or, or, or print or scripts, it was because of the log line. And today it's really no different. Uh, yeah, producers are trained. Yeah. yeah, producers are trained to look at log lines first. So right. even when they go into our site and they see a pitch package, their eye is trained to go straight to the log line and see it. If it attracts them, if it pulls them in, if it create interest, they're going to continue really scouring mm -hmm. through your project, right. looking at it, and possibly reach out to you and say, hey, I'm interested. But if your log line yeah. is a flatliner, guess what? That's the end of your project. 
Yeah. And that's the same too, to get out of the slush pile for the queries uh, for agents, because they're still looking for that top lead in line. So it's, it's important that you know and understand what you're doing and which audience you're using. Um, and, and like you said, it can make a difference between getting your work picked up and not same, same thing here. And, you know, um, the log line serves even further than that, because mm -hmm. once you really have a strong log, log line in place, it's really the backbone to your pitch. Right. So a lot of people are saying like, you know, I'm not sure about my pitch. Well, do you have a strong log line? Because really the, the, the log line and the pitch go hand in hand. It's just kind of like an expanded version of that. So um, we're going to get started. And the way we're going to get started is with a little bit of fun. We're going to pull up three yeah. movie log line examples. And I'm going to ask you guys to play along. Tell me if you recognize what movie these log lines are of. So yes. the first one, we're bringing it up. Can you read that, Danielle? I can, even though I don't have my glasses on. Um, scientists <laughs> reproduce dinosaurs on an island, but a greedy employee releases them, and a group of people try to get off the island alive. It's pretty oh, self-explanatory, wow. right? You know <laughs> it's a pretty straightforward log line, but yes. I think the image behind <laughs> Yeah, it kind of gives it away. Kind of gives it away. <laughs> Make sure so, that you're putting your live comments on there too, because we want to be able to bring you on as well tonight. So let us know that you're here. And then if you know what the log line is referring to, please go ahead and put it in your live comments as well. All right. Are you ready so for the next one? We're going to get ready for the, sec uh, for the second yeah. one. I haven't seen anyone write in for the first one, even I though know. I think it's kind of obvious. <laughs> All right, so we're ready for the second one. Bring it on, Bianca. All right. Three buddies wake up from a bachelor party in Las Vegas with no memory of the previous night and the bachelor's missing. Now they must put together the pieces of the night before and get him to the altar before it's too late. Whoa, I know. Well, let's think, let's think about that for a second. Um, we didn't get many clues there, but that is the log line for that movie. And thank you, Dana. I see Dana said Jurassic Park. Yes, I believe that's job. correct. The first that one. Correct. And do we have any call outs for the second log line? Let's see what's coming across. Anybody? Anybody brave enough? What yep. is that Dude. second long line? The Judith hangover. Yeah, good job, Judith. Yeah, I think yeah. so too. That would yeah. be my guess as well. That's All right, great. so we're going to go to our third one. Mm -hmm. Let's see what that says. All right, Benjamin Barry. Oh, I already know what this one is. <laughs> is an advertising <laughs> executive and a ladies' man who, to win the big campaign, bets that he can make a woman fall in love with him in 10 days. Anybody? Yeah, that's a great log line too. Thank it's you, Judith, perfect. for the hangover, by the way. Yes. And Dana is is winning here. And Anne Marie de Clark, I see you too. The hangover. Thank you. <laughs> Ron. Ron is it. talking about another one, Armageddon. <laughs> but Ron, we're not talking about Armageddon. <laughs> Although that so, might classify in the hangover at some point. <laughs> so who's got that third one? Oh, you love that movie, Ron? So what is it? What is that third one? That Remember? Third log line. Can we bring she, the third log line up again? Yeah, let's let's do that, please. Let's bring it up. Benjamin Mary is an advertising executive and ladies' oh, man who Ron to win a big campaign <laughs> bets that he can make a woman fall in love with him in 10 days. Yep. Except for the typo, Ron, that looks good. How to lose a guy in 10 days. <laughs> <laughs> Don't bust his chops. Come on. <laughs> Emery, thank you. Yes, I think thank those are right. You. So let's, let's yes. pull up uh, the posters for each of those movies. Here we go. There they are. Yep. So perfect. Jurassic Park, Hangover, and How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. That's right. So... Thank you everyone for that. So now I hope that everyone has pencil and paper at hand. We're going to go straight to work. I did say this was a working session. And right. basically I'm going to give you all a very simple formula that would really walk you through what a, a log line must have, those essential elements that a log line must have. 
Right. But a log line is, um, it's more like science and art pulled together because even though I'm going to give you some rules, it's not really a simple summary. If you just say one plus one plus right. one equals three, it's just not going to work out. So it's going to fall flat. Um, you know, we're, we're going to go through some of these. And I want to thank um, Danielle. Thank you, Danielle. We're going to bring up her log line, her original log line. Which is more of a tagline, by the exactly, way. Exactly. Which is where I brought it. Yeah. short. So yes. that's not a tagline either. But let's I know. Go ahead. Yeah. go ahead. All right. Guarded secrets come to light to light as a cursed typewriter, antique typewriter. Oh, Bianca, can you bring that back up full? Thank you. Um, begins uh, spilling long forgotten buried truths of the Yale family. Each secret revealed has the ability to break a nation, change history and disrupt a secret society. All right. So that's more I of a longer agent pitch tagline for a query letter. That's essentially oh, okay. that's a good one so for that. Good. Yes. Now yeah. I understand where you're coming from, but as yeah. a producer, I'm looking at it and I'm going, hmm, hmm I don't I really know what it is. Right. right. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring in the log line key elements. It's going to be three hmm. that we're going to be discussing today. So we're going to be discussing the protagonist, the conflict or struggle with, with the antagonist, and hmm. what is at stake. So all three elements, if you want to write them down, now would be a good time. Right. And if you have your log line next to you at this point, it would be great because you're going to start taking notes on each of these items as we go along. So let's go to the protagonist. Let me so, ask you a question before you really dig in deep. With these being the key elements and you have them in order, because I know this is going to come up, is this necessarily the order in which it should be written at all times, even though this is no. you know, a really good formula? No. Okay. That's no, important. That's where it becomes an art. Right. So I'm going to give you the science part. Perfect. You have a homework later on to create it in art. It doesn't have to be in any particular order. All right. Perfect. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to um, and stick with the first one now. So the first element is we said it was the protagonist. Right. What I like to do is to create an avatar. And we talked about this, Danielle, like yes, creating an yes. avatar of your main person. Yes. You know, do you say old man or do you say wretched old man? It, it gives you a different... You know, producers are visual, right. right? We need to see that. Do you say young secretary or mm -hmm. nail biting insecure secretary? Th that gives you a completely different, yeah. you know, sense of what we're talking about for the story. So, right. you know, I'm going to give you guys a minute and start thinking about your main character and how does this character, what are the adjectives mm, that yeah, can bring this character point. alive that can right. really tell you, give them a little death, like within two words or three words that you're like, oh, I get this, what the story is about. So let's think about that for a minute. And I know Danielle mm -hmm. that you were doing, you were working around that as well. Yes, yeah. So in uh, the whiz bang machine, which is the tagline that you saw, the main character, the protagonist, um, it's twofold, but it's a 15 year old girl. And so immediately you get a vision of a younger girl. You also know that she's with her grandfather. So you have a duo there that is young and old. But what's so important um, is what you said is the adjectives, you know, um, and, and not the full description writers, which is where we like to get hung up, which is, you know, she had brown hair and blue eyes and all of that. But no, what is she? Who is she? And give us something a little bit more meaty. Exactly. So the other thing that people ask me about the logline is, should you add a character name? Should you give the, your protagonist a name? And it, there's really no set fast rules about this. It's really, you got to think, is adding a name adding value to your logline? Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, you see a, a lot of loglines, they don't have names. Right. Some do. So there's really no rules. You really have to kind of, you know your story better than anyone you wrote mm -hmm. it. So you have to know if right. giving the name or not endears you. Does it endear you to the, to the, to the, um, to the character? Does it bring right. any other information that the name brings with it? If not, maybe you need to leave it out. Right. Um, and we so, always have to remember too name association, right? So a producer may hate a girl named Elizabeth and then instantly that's off the table, really. So, you know, think about that too. <laughs> oh my God, can you imagine? <laughs> think that about would it not though. Be good. So no. um, as we're talking about 
the protagonist, I'm going to bring in key questions because yeah. these are the questions that are going to bring you out of the funk. Like when you're struggling with writing and crafting your log line and you're like, oh, I'm not sure, you know, what are the mm -hmm. adjectives? What is this? What is that? If you ask yourself these questions, it's going to help you come along. So the key question for the protagonist is, who is my protagonist and what do they want? What is their goal? Right. So if you kind of you know, you might want to write this down. Who is my protagonist and what do they want? Think of right. what is your goal in this story? Like, what is it that moves them, right? Right. What's the end game? Exactly. Yeah. So that's going to mm -hmm. help you a lot. Uh, so are are there any questions coming through about the protagonist or is, is that kind of clear? Not right now. But if you have any, please know that I am watching and so is Bianca. So please go ahead and uh, put those in there. Okay, so we're going to move on to um, the conflict or is also the struggle with the antagonist. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that I have to say is that the struggle is also always from the viewpoint of the protagonist. Yeah. Okay, so it's the protagonist battling something. Um, so who is she fighting against or he or they um, show the frustration of what it is the, what it takes to get what they want done. Right. Um, and this is really where the antagonist comes in because obviously your protagonist wants something yet your antagonist also wants or is trying to keep away, right? Right. So here is when um, the conflict comes in into your log line and it really becomes interesting because if you have a story, right. it's just about two characters, but there's no conflict where's the interesting thing you don't have yeah you don't have the story yeah right. you need we're, something that moves mm -hmm. exactly i mean there right. don't get me wrong there's artsy movies out there right that really don't move that way and you know those are the exception they're, and they're 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 called artsy movies for a reason it doesn't really have a moving plot or anything like that but most stories especially novels they have a conflict right so um, it's almost it's almost like you're dividing your plot right then, right? Between the two characters. What is the end game over here? And what's the plot that's going to take you forward? And what's the other side of it that is going to try to stop that plot or that end game? So think of it that way if your your mind can't get to the other side of it. Exactly. So now we have a key question as well for the conflict. And the key question is who or what are they struggling against? Right. So if you ask yourself a simple question, it, you know, it, it comes into focus. So right. that's going to help you again. So any questions as far? I think, my God, we have excellent yeah. learners here today. <laughs> I know it's crickets out there. I know you guys have questions, but you probably will have questions after this is over and you begin writing as well. So also know that you can go back into this live broadcast at any time and add comments and and we'll both be looking to make sure that we can answer anything sure as well. absolutely yeah and then so now we're going to go on to element number three okay. which is what is at stake right and some people call this the death stake and the reason why in the industry is considered a death stake because they feel like the biggest thing you can have at stake is actually your own life or the life yes. of the world for example so right. um what is at stake and it could be something literal, like your life, or it could be something imagined, mm -hmm. like something that's very important, like what's at stake is your your mental condition or, right. uh, you know, something that, that's very valuable that maybe you can't touch it. It's not a person, but that's what's at stake. So it could be figurative right. as well. Um, for example, never love again, uh, forever stuck in a life that you hate a relationship that ends, all those could be at stake. Um, again, from the protagonist perspective. So ask how does this protagonist risk in dying? And like I said, dying is figuratively, right? Doesn't have right. to be that they are actually in danger right. of being killed. Um, and this is really what makes you care for the story. So if you have this part mm -hmm. down, this is what brings the feelings out, right? So this is what's right. at stake. I'm going to care now. I mean, they're, you know, she's going to lose her life or her, you know, or her love or her life or something yeah. else. Um, Anything of value, really. Something of value. And the higher yeah. the stake, the better. Right. 
And that's that's true whether you're trying to pitch for television or film or even just books. It's those elements that bring readers or viewers all the way in. And that's how you know you have um, really great writing as well. So those elements are just as important in that log line as they are in your actual chapters too. So we do have a question. Oh, there we go. Does the log line need to impress or shock? It needs to sell. It needs to sell like fire. <laughs> yeah, it needs yeah. to sell. If, if you know, if, like I said, if you have a flatliner, um, they're just absolutely going to move pass. On. It doesn't yeah. mean your story's a flatliner. Right. But think you're about it this way. A story in your hand, you just don't know how to sell it, which is right. It's completely sad because that is the case for many people. Um, Cause they're just not going to go beyond the log line many times. So if right. you can't create interest and excitement over your story with a great log line, Jesus, you know, I feel bad because you, yeah. you spent three years running your, your, your amazing story and a producer might just pass it by not, not understanding that it is an amazing story. Um, yeah. And this is a piece of marketing too, right? I mean, this is so important. We're using this obviously on Story Rocket as a way to sell. So this is your first impression, your very first impression. It's the very first thing other than the, the cover or the movie poster or whatever that they're seeing. But this is your literal first impression, whether you're using it as a tagline or a log line. Um, this is all of your work condensed down into one, two sentences and it is meant to sell. So you need to look at it that way as well. Exactly. Yeah. And there's a couple of other questions that people ask. So oh, here we if have you notice, right we here. have not discussed settings. Yes. Let's address this question really quick. Anna Marie put sure. up, um, can a log line be a question? That's a really good question. Thank you. <laughs> It only if it's if it's gonna no. entice you. It, it you yeah. don't have to reveal the ending, by the way. Right. The long line. You don't have to reveal your ending. In fact, it's better than not because you want to be you want to have it as a hook, like as a tease. Mm -hmm. So if you're gonna use that question as a hook, why not? That's where your creativity comes in. So as, as long as you give them enough to, much, to I would have to yeah. do some investigation as to mm -hmm. who's used it, but if, if it's going to hook, hook someone in, definitely use it. Um, the other item that we didn't discuss is settings. Yes. So what about a setting? Do I say something about the setting? And again, it's only if it's important to the story. Mm -hmm. So if That's it's going to add value to mm -hmm. your log line, then please do, especially if you have, if you're in a world that you've created that has different rules. For example, in right. a world where people die at the age of 30, right? So and so happens that you, you must set the rule and the world, the setting, because otherwise you're not going to understand the rest of a log of the log line. So right. in those instances, you must set up that setting. But and otherwise, just, you know, um, yeah. you don't have to. It's a normal world that you and I live in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we take all the rules for granted, so you don't have to. But in those cases that it's not in our, right. the story doesn't take place in our normal world environment, yes, you it, it, it would help you. Yeah, and we yeah. saw that with like Brian Fitzpatrick where he had um, brought on a great log line about his world that he created. So that's a good example to go back to and, and take a look on the site as well. Um, as to a really good log line that draws you into an imaginary world. Exactly. Yeah. And the last one you had actually asked in the front, which is what about the uh, order? Order, yes. Yeah, yeah. so the, do you start with your protagonist and end with your stake? And mm -hmm. no, it doesn't have to be. We, I've seen it done in, in many ways. Mm -hmm. um, so here's where the art part comes in. If you guys remember, it's a science and an art. Mm -hmm. form to create a log line. So that's where, you know, you need to write and rewrite and think and, and, and just leave it alone for a day mm -hmm. or and two hours and come back to it. Right. So Ron is writing again. Did he get on coffee? <laughs> I think on this man. Um, homophobic Nebraska trucker is hypnotized into believing he's the world's greatest fashion designer. Flamboyant like Liberace and very gay. After living the glamorous life for three years and being the toast of the New York fashion industry, the hypnotist returns to let our protagonist know 
who he really is. He now has to come to terms with his two worlds. Ron, it's good, but it's a bit lengthy. Maybe it's we long. Can Maybe yeah. you can work on it a little bit. What do you think, Ron? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I yeah. Like it. So um, let's let's look at your before and after. Yes. So we're going to take a look at your after. Okay. Can we take a look at, um, at her after? So her after says 15-year-old Elizabeth Jail, Yale, and her grandfather, Jack, joined forces with a cursed antique typewriter in hopes of decoding a guarded, guarded secrets of their family's long and tragic past. What's uncovered has the ability to break a nation by upsetting the royal throne and disrupting a menacing secret society charged with keeping a centuries old curse. So that's your new log line. That is and the new one. That is so great. So let, let's dissect this for a second. So who are your, who's your protagonist? Actually, you have a couple of people. You have yeah. Elizabeth Yale. Right. You have her grandfather. Correct. And you and have the typewriter. typewriter. Mm -hmm. So all those are, you actually have three people, three, three, <laughs> two people and one entity, the antique typewriter. <laughs> yes. Live. Um, that's right. Go to your to your antagonist. <laughs> Ron says, "Hey, that's longer than mine." <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. um, okay. we can we can count words. Um, so let's look at the conflict and the struggle with the antagonist. So the antagonist, yes. I see it as his menacing secret society. There you go. That's it. Yeah, it's right there. And what is the struggle? So the struggle is they're trying to keep some secrets that these guarded secrets right, right. here. Exactly. And what's that? And state? they don't want to upset. Yeah. What's so obviously upsetting the nation um, by changing the royal th throne. And obviously later on, if they don't keep the curse, then she might die. But I don't have that last sentence in there because it was getting a little lengthy. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a way to, uh, to to really summarize that, but you know, I say right. it as um, changing the family's history, right? Right. Yes. By revealing a long guarded secret, so that's kind of like um, that. That's what's at stake. So this right. this family's whole history is at stake. So right. it, it's a good log line. I mean, you have all the pieces there. As a producer, I understand it. I see it. I like it. Mm -hmm. It has interesting characters including a typewriter that just goes by itself and writes right messages exactly. um it has probably sus suspense and mystery you That's know right um with this group of menacing uh, secret society and you know i think it's really good uh stephanie's on thank you stephanie and she says this is great uh we're glad you're here stephanie thank you stephanie yes so um the last thing before we move on is there is a litmus test that you could do. It's easy um, right. to check your log line and it's actually trying it with a friend. You don't have to be on stage. You don't have to right. be on Story Rocket Live. Just pick up a friend and say, hey, let me tell you about my story mm -hmm. and give them the log line. If they look confused, if they're asking questions, if they don't understand something, guess what? Something's not clear and it's not going to be clear to a producer. So go right. back and polish, polish, polish. Now, if they say, I love it, that should be a movie or that should be a, a, on to a, it. a TV series or something. Yeah. Then, you know, you've, you've nailed it. You've basically nailed it. So go to your friends, right. go to a family member and just say, Hey, let me tell you about my story mm -hmm. and, um, and see what it is. So, that's the end of my portion of class. If anybody yes. has any questions, we could take them now. Yes, definitely. And remember that you, when you need both the tagline and the logline on your uh, platform here on Story Rocket, you definitely want to make sure you have the logline front and center, not the tagline. There are some that are out there that are like that that just have the tagline, including mine. So <laughs> definitely change that. Definitely that's, do it. That's wonderful. Well, I yes. hope um, 
I hope that I think it was Ann Smith last week, and I know she's going to probably be, um, yeah. be looking at this as a, a rerun. But um, I hope that uh, she's getting a lot of information out of this um, yeah. the small little class that we brought together. But I think it's we're really hitting it straight, you know, straight on uh, the three key elements: the protagonist, the conflict with the struggle with the antagonist, and what's mm -hmm. at stake. If you guys can figure that out, do it in a creative way. Do it in a succinct summary style way then you've got something right um and like i said this is important guys if not your great story might be passed by and you don't even know why is that right. so sad I'm gonna cry. It's, <laughs> it's always hard to see a pass and you don't know why and again first impressions are everything yes 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 yes, yes. so now we're getting ready That's to do the thing. second yes. part of today's broadcast which is with an author and we are so thrilled um this author that we're going to bring in her name is patty wiseman and mm -hmm. she's got seven books on story rocket today and um her books um are not all of them but she has uh a series of romance in the 1920s mm -hmm. so kind of like a period piece Right. And uh, they're all about strong women. But the one that we're actually looking at today is that one moment, which is I really liked it when I looked at her entire books yes. as a producer. And I'm thinking, like, what can I produce right now? Um, right. I love that one moment. So that's who we're going to talk about today. Mm -hmm. um, could you could you put up her seven books? And her site looks really are. great. Yeah, those Beautiful. are her seven books yeah. on Story Rocket. Mm -hmm. uh, those of you who who are members and 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 those that are not, you can just become a member. It's free. Join this community, mm -hmm. which is of writers and producers, and leave her a comment. I mean, she's she's one wonderful writer. Um, her uh, her fans have left her amazing comments. Um, yeah. I'm just going to read a couple before we move on. Um, says this novel is full of mystery, suspense, and romance. Nothing mushy about the story. It keeps you on the edge of your seat from the first to the last page. That's a nice compliment. Coming. Yes, it is. Yeah, yes. definitely. So I think if uh, we can bring her on. Yeah, we're ready to see her. Weissman to our show. Yes. There she is. Hi, Hi Patty. Hi. <laughs> Hi. This has been so great. Thank uh, you. Good. We're glad you learned something too. That's exciting. Yeah. I've got to go back and redo some log lines, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all in that mode right now. Like, oh no. Oh no. Well, I'm so excited um, to have you here because I think that what's so important is to talk about your history and how you came to writing to begin with. I think we all want to know about that. Well, I've always loved to write. I think as a child, I started out as po with poetry. And from my first grade teacher, I moved on to, to like short stories. But then life happened and I got married, had two children, had a full-time career for 25 years as a financial advisor assistant. And life just got in the way. And it mm -hmm. wasn't until I retired from that job that I picked it up again and just ran full force with it and talked about having to catch up and learn mm -hmm. what writing is about today. Because, you know, writers back when I was growing up were writing very different than what sure. we find acceptable today. Mm -hmm. So I took a lot of online classes and uh, started just putting it out there and what do you know? I won some awards. So I thought, well, OK, I'm on the right track. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a good test, isn't it? Whenever the awards start yeah, coming in. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Sure is. Yeah. So do you want to tell us a little bit about your books? I know we've really um, focused on one tonight, and it really seems like your life experiences are, are written within your pages. Every one of my books has a piece of me in, in them. And my historical uh, series is based in the 1920s in Detroit, Michigan, because that's where it happened. And my grandmother told me those stories when I was just a small child, and they, they mm -hmm. stayed with me. So there's pieces in their fiction. I wrote them as fiction, but there's pieces in there that are actually 
true. And you have to figure out which pieces are true or not. And then, <laughs> of course, that one moment uh, was based on my childhood and the fact that my dad uh, survived Pearl Harbor. And he uh, spent six years in the war and then couldn't wouldn't go back out on the ocean for anything. And he mm -hmm. started back packing us around the mountains, Mount Rainier specifically, up in Seattle. And um, picture, yeah. yeah, that's me. I was about 15 there and my mom and dad, and my two brothers. But um, yeah, I took the Rocky Mountains and Mount Rainier and all those experiences. And we, we wanted to go to Disneyland, but oh no, right. it was backpacking. <laughs> and you know, that really taught me a lot of life lessons i didn't get it at the time <laughs> but sure. you know uh, i do now and i put so much background in that story um and then i have a children's book that is based on our dog cutter who actually saved two baby foxes from drowning oh, so wow. every every book from our, we have a pond on our land, and every book I write, I, I seem to be putting a piece of me and real life experiences in them. And that's how we as writers leave legacies, really. Mm -hmm. So I think it's mm -hmm. a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Nani, you know, what, one of the things that, that caught my eye was that all your stories, like I said before, they weave this these strong women into the story. Mm -hmm. They're not like you said, mm -hmm. like, you know, you're your patsy little, you know, romantic stories are really, yeah. uh, they have a lot of it to them. And you said to me, hey, I grew up that way. I, di I didn't like it so much. I didn't right. like it the mountains. But right. you know, I use it for my stories. And then you told me, I know how to shoot a gun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know how to shoot a gun. And the uh, prota protagonist in that one moment, knows how to shoot a gun and i took that life experiences as well and i used to take my sons i have two boys and i used to take my sons backpacking around in texas uh when we found ourselves just the three of us and you know so i got to teach them some life lessons too and i think you know, my dad's been gone a long time, but those lessons stay with you. And right. I love putting the that type of thing in my stories. So, it's Danielle, you and I have to not cross Patty. <laughs> right? <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> a gun to Texan. No, thank you. I'm I you know a little about scared now, Patty. I thought you were some scared. <laughs> I don't know about that now. Um, so talking about her book that she's going to pitch a little bit later called That yes. One Moment. Can we bring up the cover to um, That One Moment? Um, so tell us what the Beautiful story cover. is about, because I know we've kind of been touching here and there about it, but right. tell us a little bit about That One Moment, what the story is about. Well, I particularly don't like to read fluffy romances. You know, I wanted type of heroine, a strong woman. And so, my gosh, I made her a game warden. You know, she packed the gun. And, um, but she thinks she's, um, you know, able to handle anything. And, you know, in my younger years, I thought that too. <laughs> but <laughs> she suffered the ultimate betrayal. And in order to, I don't know if I want to give all of it away, but in order to, uh, reconstruct the trust she had in herself as well as the antagonist, she chose to take a survivalist course in the Rocky Mountains, uh, going back to her roots, so to speak, getting her feet back on the ground. And um, she met a, uh, she stayed at Wolf's Den Lodge and she of course, the trail boss is going to be the, you know, love interest. And but she doesn't accept that first. She's no, I'm done. You know, ultimate betrayal. I'm not going to do this any anymore. He also has uh, some love problems of his own that he's trying to heal from. So they're kind of back and forth, back and forth, you know, 
And, um, but finally, during the course of the story, they start to come together and learn how to love and trust again until evil descends upon the mountains and Russ comes back. And Russ is a, oh my gosh, he's got the biceps. He's a detective in the Dallas Police Department. Good looking ladies man. And she left him. And he's so much of a sociopath that he can't accept that. So he's going to hunt her down and either bring her back to pick up their relationship because he bed her best friend. That's what happened. And, you know, he's he can't understand why she left him over that. So, you know. So anyway, he um, he comes back and he kidnaps her. And then the story really takes a lot of twists and turns as far as that go. He 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 uh, pretends that he's going to be this take this class as a survivalist and he gets up under Corey's um, team. And that's how he gets to Ricky. So there's even a bear in, in this story. There's even a bear. That attacks. Even a bear. Yeah. And, you know, as a kid, we um, encountered bears up in the National Forest. And my dad taught us a lot about how to ward off a bear because you can't take guns in the National Park. So we learned to hang uh, a tin frying pan with a metal spoon on our backpack and it would clang as we walked because bears run away from noise. So <laughs> there is a bear in the story too. <laughs> Everything is weaved back together. I love it. It is, it is. Yeah. But so we, uh, we this we've is already a story got of- comments on this saying, can't wait to read. So oh, you're really? getting- Yes, oh, thank you Rosa. Cool. So um, you got I more fans that. as we go along, which is great. And this book, Oh, says so the best stories are when you put a little of yourself in them. Thank you, Ron. Absolutely. And yeah. um, actually, so this book won in uh, first place. And uh, yes, we, we see are. you there, right? Is that that's when this book won first place? I would imagine this picture. Uh, that was Texas actually at a, a book. Yeah, Texas Authors yeah. Association had a, a to do, yeah. and um, that's actually not at the award ceremony, but. I was wearing my little medal there. So she bought my book. And so that's I perfect. like that picture. Yes, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Actually, then, all my books have won an award, except for the last one, with I, which I haven't submitted for an award. So all of them have won excellent. awards. So, yeah. And uh, you yeah. really um, talk a lot about Texas, and that's obviously really endearing to you as well. Um, but you have a special role in Texas as well, right? What What are you doing to kind of help other authors in Texas right now? Well, I've always liked to mentor other people and help them along the way. But um, let's see, I've been the, the um, president of the East Texas Writers Association in Longview, Texas, for a little over a year. And that was a special thing uh, for me because it gave me the opportunity to help a lot of uh, writers to present programs that would uh, increase their knowledge and learn. Mm -hmm. And that's just a special thing in my heart because I didn't really have that opportunity at first. I had to go right. online and start learning. You don't just sit down and write a book. <laughs> there <Right>. are rules, <laughs> yes, you know, there <laughs> and there are times when you can break those rules, but for the most part you have to have you know, certain elements in your story. So being the president of the um, Writers Association in, in Longview has been a special thing. Um, when election came up, you know, in November for the next year, I was I was wondering, you know, have I done enough that they want me back as the president? And sure enough, they voted me back. So uh, congratulations. here I go again, you know. <laughs> you. That's great. We just saw some yeah. pictures. I don't know if you saw them on your monitor, but yes. um, of a um, event that you did with your association. And if you can tell us a little bit about that. It was a dinner mystery. 
and one of our members uh, has a company that she uh, produces these dinner theaters, and she asked if she could come and present it to our writers group. Well, my goodness, they loved it. It was so fun, and they broke out in groups to try to solve the mystery. And I think that was one of the best programs we put on. It was a lot of fun. A lot That's of fun. great. That's why they want you yeah. back. How could they not yes. want this, right? Exactly. <laughs> I want to go to your mystery right? dinner courses. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Well, obviously groups like that are, are big on marketing. And so can you give us some really excellent marketing tips, not only um, through what you're teaching as a president, but even what you're using to have engagement on Story Rocket as well. Well, I do use Story Rocket a lot. I'm I'm sharing it mm -hmm. everywhere. And what I like about Story Rocket is that you get to put the whole package on your page there. Mm -hmm. And so whoever's gonna look at it can find out everything. I have right. my tagline, I have my log line, I have a synopsis, I even have the first chapter as a PDF mm -hmm. file. And what's really fun, and, and uh, y'all have helped me with this, is being able to pick and choose the actors that right. you might mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. I love that part. And so whoever's looking at it can almost see, I'm sorry, I talk with my hands, um, almost <laughs> see the, um, you know, the actors that might be good in that mm -hmm. role. And one particular uh, character in my book, he's not a main character, but he's got a lot to do with the story. His name is Wolf Kelly, and he, he uh, uh, owns Wolf's Den Lodge. And he's a big, burly, bear wrestling kind of guy. And I chose Jeff Bridges because I think he's so, you know, the hair and the beard and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I, I love picking the actors that and actresses that were going to be in there. The well, cast you just gave me a list. great yeah. segue um, to your pitch package. So we're going to look at that live right now. Yes. Um, hopefully, Bianca can pull it up. Let's see. It takes a little <laughs> second to, for it to load. But here we are. There it is. We can see it. Um, so you have a beautiful pitch package. I have to tell you that. It's very attractive. So here's your tagline. Well done. One man wants her. Another won't let her go. So very good. It's, 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 mm -hmm. it's dramatic. It's promotional. It's short. This is what you would see, like I said, in the big billboard ad for your movie. Um, mm -hmm. We see the romance, drama, mystery. <clears throat> you have a nice movie trailer. Are you guys looking at that, at the movie mm. trailer? Beautiful. So. That um, actually was done by a fellow author of mine who's really good at doing stuff like that. Beautiful. Then nice you have your um, ISBN number and uh, the, the intended medium for television or a movie. It's a book. Uh, you have uploaded your manuscript so people can request a full project or send you a message. Wonderful. You've had 230 views and four appreciations. So that's very good. So that means people are looking at your project and you're, you're getting some traction there. Um, and here's your log line. Let's look at that for a second. Ricky Sheridan, a tough gun wielding game warden escapes to a survivalist camp in the Rocky mountains when her love detective her lover detective, Ross Desmond, betrays her with her best friend, Layla. The healing begins with new love, Corey Littleton, until Ross brings his evil revenge to the mountain. I like it. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. that's it. I, I tweaked it a little before we, you know, before I put it back up there because I had something a little different up there. But after talking with you guys, I, I figured I need to. Get that fixed. <laughs> well done. Well, well done. Thank we you. All have to see thank it. you. Yes. yes. <laughs> nice to the point. We get it. We 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 like it. We see what's going on. Um, right. Okay. Let's look at your cast wish list. So you have Ryan Guzman as Corey Littleton. Um, oh, sorry about that. Let's see. If we can get back in there. And while we wait, there was a question. Anna Marie asked, um, are all of your books in, from the Velvet Shoe Collection set in Detroit? 
Yes, uh, uh, yes, they go. are. They're all, um, they stay with the same characters. The story progresses, but the fourth book is with secondary characters, but the main characters are still in the fourth book. And there, I'm actually working on a fifth one. Okay, perfect. Okay, Ron so says we're, I can we're see back the with movie. The package. You got it? Okay. Yes, let's see if we can bring it on again. It up. Yeah. And let's see. All right, so we were at her cast wish list. So we had um, Christina Hendricks as Ricky, Bradley Cooper as Ross, and Jeff Bridges as Wolf Kelly. So let's see. So Christina would be your protagonist, right? Ricky, yes. Yeah. Ricky. Um, Corey is the guy that she meets up in the mountain. The one that leads. Yes, to the love interest. Yes, the okay. love interest, the survivalist camp um, guide, and then Bradley Cooper. That's who you're saying is uh, her ex. <laughs> yeah, I want to yeah, see. I, I can see why. Bradley I can see why try to leave behind. <laughs> do a bad guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I just, I like Bradley Cooper. I want to see him do a bad guy. You know, he might have to work out a little to get those biceps up, but. <laughs> I think most women just got, want to see Bradley uh, Cooper. Wolf <laughs> Kelly. So um, Wolf Kelly would be one of your supporting roles. Mm -hmm. um, what does he yeah. do in, in your he book? He is the owner of uh, Wolf's Den Lodge. And he's taken Corey under his wing. And he's he has had decades of a failed romance. And I touch on that in the book. And that, that's going to spin off into another book but he's in his 60s and mm. so he's failed at that relationship but he's always giving advice to Corey and Ricky which I find really fun <laughs> so, so he's, he, saying, he's a good sorry to interrupt mm. Ron is saying that he can see the movie on the Lifetime channel Yay! Yeah, that's really. I would good. love that. Yeah, <laughs> I actually could see it. Um, it depends because I think he, somebody says I agree with Ron Dana. Thank you, Dana. Um, he says the only film I remember mm -hmm. Bradley Cooper as the bad guy was in Wedding Crashers. Interesting, but he wasn't yeah. that bad. Was he? Yeah, he wasn't, he wasn't that, that bad. This is a bad. totally. This is a a, a yeah. sociopath. <laughs> <laughs> a, real, a, a real psycho, right? Yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, so uh, your, your book has a lot of suspense, uh, uh, mm -hmm. mystery, thriller. It, it's got all the elements that really keep you at the edge of your seat. I can see why your fans say that they were kept on the edge of your seat from the front to the end. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So I think we're getting ready for your it's pitch. Time. Are you ready? Oh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a yes. It's, you are it's, so it's, ready. Yes, I'm very ready. Yes. 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 <laughs> You're so I, um, I'll remind you and also the people that are seeing us um, that she's getting graded on ten, a, a total of 10 points. Right. Five points are for the quality of her concept, which means the quality of her story. And the other five is um, for the quality of her pitch. So how right. well she knows her book, how, how, you know, how she can sell it. Uh, is she enthusiastic about it? Um, all that stuff. The, the concept, the quality of the concept is, is it original? Can we visualize it in a medium like Ron just did? Absolutely. Right. Is it a strong story? Are the characters and, you know, someone that you like? Um, what about the conflict? Is the conflict clear? Um, so all of that comes into the quality of the concept. So um, we're going to say ready, set, pitch, and the timer will start. You got 90 seconds to pitch to us. And uh, are we there ready, Bianca? Bianca says she's ready. So, Danielle, ready, ready set, 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 pitch. pitch. Ricky Sheridan is a feisty, no-nonsense, gun-toting game warden in Dallas, Texas. Her childhood taught her how to fend for herself. The Navy taught her the skills she needed for adulthood. She thought she had it all, that she was tough enough to handle anything until the ultimate betrayal. Her longtime boyfriend, Detective Russ Desmond, bedded her best friend, Layla. In order to heal from this, she decides to take a survivalist 
uh, training camp up in the Rocky Mountains. Go back to her roots and remember fishing with her dad and backpacking in the mountains. She headed to Wolf's Den Lodge, where she hoped to spend two weeks healing. She meets Corey, the trail boss, and he is interested immediately, but she pushes him away because she just can't trust. She doesn't trust herself and she doesn't trust him. But eventually, spending that two weeks together, they, they break that barrier and start to come together until um, Russ Desmond brings his evil to the mountains. Russ Desmond Hi. thinks he's a ladies' man. Was that? Uh, that's oh, your time. time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I went back by fast. It, I think it was actually, um, when you said he brought his evil to the mountain, I think that could have been an ending, too. Yeah. Oh, good. Given, yeah, you have already pretty much okay. given us, you know, the whole, you know, you know the, the whole uh, story arc. So we're going to take a few seconds and we're going to um, give you a score and tell you what we loved, what could be improved. And also we want, um, please, the people that are on live, let's give your reaction. What do you guys think? What did you like? Mm -hmm. oh. I love that. Well-structured pitch. It wrong. sells me. You hit all of the points. I oh, agree. Wow. I agree. Thank and you. I'm ready whenever you are. If anybody also has any uh, live comments about um, how the pinch went, or if you have any uh, ideas, please go ahead and put them up too. And we will definitely share them right now. Oh, way to go. <laughs> you go, girl. I love it. <laughs> oh, thank you, Dana. <laughs> yes, totally. She did a great All job. right. I'm ready. So I am too. You want me to You're start ready? or you want to start? I'm going to go first because, you know, last time I was told that I was the Simon Cow and I'm here to redeem myself because this pitch was amazing. And I give you a 10 because it's well deserved. You hit all Thank the points. Thank you. Yes. Just like Ron said, we know all of the, um, the characters and the arc and the drama and really that was one of the best ones we've seen. So congratulations. That's Thank great. you very much. Yeah. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Oh, thank well, you. you. One great pitch. So, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Rosa, so we're going to, um, I'm going to be a Simon Cal today, but not very much. Oh. Oh. Can you see this? No, uh, scoot it over. A yeah. 9.5. I'll take that. that. I will <laughs> take that. Reason, I took out that nine. That, that little half point is because you could you didn't fake it at the end. You could have ended it right there. Yeah. yeah. And instead oh, you yeah, try to yeah. keep going. So you have to be conscious of the clock, especially if you're in a I competition. I didn't see the clock. I wasn't oh, even seeing the clock. Okay. Yeah. So. Maybe it that's still, I'll excellent. take it. I'll, yeah. I'll take but, it. You know, if, if you are on a live pitch contest, which, you know, there are many around uh, and mm -hmm. some really good ones where you really get noticed. Um, if you see that the clock is coming near and you can quickly end it and just, they don't Jump know out. what you had in your bag. They yeah. don't know if you yeah. had yeah. to yeah. or yeah. or I had, you know, I had more. <laughs> <laughs> that was clear to me, but you know, I, I have to congratulate you. That was very yes. well thought. Um, oh. You took it from the storyline very clearly. I saw the main characters. I knew who they were. Um, and here's, you know, I really loved it. Stephanie, who is a producer out of Austin, Texas. She says, I'll be a, mm -hmm. uh, Simon a little. I really liked it as a read to watch it, why would I want to feel for the main character? What's going on to pull me in emotionally for her? So she wants more of the character. Okay, right. I got you. So she yeah, wants you to, I see that. Yeah, she, I, I hear Stephanie. Um, she she wants to do that. But, um, you know, we got another person, Anne-Marie DeClark. She says, I can't wait to read it. Um, mm -hmm. What else do you have? Anne-Marie says, I'm looking forward to the Velvet Shoe Collection books as well. I'm partial to stories set in Detroit. Yeah. Oh, yay. Okay. Very Emory. good. Um, Thank and, you. you know, Ron, is, Ron says that's good criticism. Good point. Yes. Um, one, I think that's one of the things that we keep hearing more and more that they, they, right. they want to hear a little bit more of the character. But I was mm -hmm. okay with 
with your beginning because it was really strong on the character. A gun wielding. What did you yeah, say? Yeah, you... same here. No nonsense. Gu gu uh, gun toting. Uh, feisty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think Game that's war. the best description we've we've heard at this point when it comes to character descriptions. So. Um, for those of you who may be interested in pitching to us, that's something to keep in mind is that that's really what we're looking for. All those adjectives, mm -hmm. all of those descriptive words, and and you really hit on all of those. And the Thank other you. thing is it was authentic. It didn't feel yes. touched. It didn't feel like you were acting. It didn't feel, it, it felt really authentic. Like you really knew your story. Right. Yeah. Oh, and that's great. so important. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we're going to say goodbye because I think we're out of battery. Do you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. We can hear I'm you. I still hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can you see me? We can see you. Yes. We see you. Because we lost the screen for a second. So oh, okay. we no, want to thank you so much, Patty. You've been a great, wonderful yeah. guest. Thank you for having yes. me. Thank you, Patty. And, it was uh, excellent. Everything that's watching, if you have any questions, suggestions, pictures to send us, um, yes. please, general at storyrocket.com. General at storyrocket.com. We're pretty good about getting back to people. We love you all. Thank you so much. Um, Danielle from yes. Houston. Thank you from so Houston, much. Texas. Thank you. And thank you so much, Patty. And thank you, everyone who has been live with us. This will stay on, on Story Rocket page, on the Facebook page for another couple of weeks. And we will also send it on through, um, it'll be on our YouTube channel as well. So for right. those people that want to see it later or want to share it with other folks, we love you oh, so good. much. And we did something here, it's called Story Rocket Love, Patty. It's a triangle for the rocket. Yes. And the heart. So story rocket love to you, Patty. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you guys were a lot of fun. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And don't forget to put in your comments for live questions and we'll get back to them as we can, but we'll, we're always looking for them. So please join us next time. You'll get that email reminder as well. And uh, we're here. If you have any ideas, uh, show topics that you are really needing us to address, please send it to that general at storyrocket.com email um, and we will get them to you as soon as we can. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Bye. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>